Hey, what's up everyone? It's Steven here. Lego Ideas announced their most recent review results, so let's talk about them. And let's make a few predictions for the next Lego Ideas review. And if you like videos like this, hitting that thumbs up and giving a subscribe really does help the channel out. All right, let's not waste any more time and let's jump right in. So the results for the Lego Ideas second 2021 review were announced on February 23rd. And for me at least, they were a bit disappointing but I'm sort of getting accustomed to that and trying not to get my hopes too high for any of the sets. It just feels like the LEGO Ideas Review Board and myself have very different selection and elimination criteria. But let's give prop to the creators whose sets were picked. First is user Norton74 and his A-Frame Cabin set. I will say, of the two sets, this one surprised me. I guess because this just never appealed to me as a set. Who knows what LEGO will do with the final design, but this feels like it'll be a high piece count to price set, just from the amount of small pieces in this mock. I suspect people will like that aspect from a perceived value, though it'll probably be a lot of small pieces, but I just don't see myself getting this set. I appreciate how detail-oriented this set is, it just doesn't speak to me. I'm also not confident on this one selling super well, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. But despite the set not being for me, kudos to Norton74. The next set I think was 100% predictable. If I'd made a prediction video for this review, the BTS's Dynamite set would have absolutely been one of the two to three sets I would have picked. Again, kudos to the creators, JB Brick Fanatic and Bangton Bricks. Super smart on their part to do this set as BTS is one of the most popular bands in the world. Plus, this coincides with LEGO doing more music and band-themed sets. They recently announced the Spice Girls Brickheads, and then, of course, the Jazz Quartet was selected in the first 2021 review. My guess is that this set will be fast-tracked, and we might see this earlier than you expect, even before some of the other LEGO idea sets. And unlike the A-Frame, I think this set is going to speak to even non-LEGO fans, and this set will sell crazy well. I'll be interested to see what they end up doing as a final build for this set, and as much as I'm not surprised by this set's selection, it also doesn't really speak to me, so I'll probably pass on this set as well, unless I get it purely as an investment set. And then lastly, we found out that the LEGO Ideas board has rejected the Snow White and Seven Dwarfs Cottage, which honestly is a shame, because it's a great looking set, and personally, I like it more than either of the two sets that they picked in this review. In fairness, it's always a bit tricky when a set is proposed in an already ongoing theme like Disney Princess, which is why I think the modulars never get picked as well. Okay, now let's really get into the fun part of this video, trying to predict the results of the next review. So let's make a few ground rules for myself, and if you want to play at home, which, if so, give me your predictions down in the comments below. If we look at the last six reviews, the board typically picks between one to three sets, so we'll keep ourselves to a max of three predictions. I'm also going to throw them into tiers into how likely I think each set is to getting made. Then I'll give my predictions of what the LEGO Ideas board is going to pick, and then what sets I would pick. All right, let's do it. So our five categories are definitely getting made, feels possible, eh, maybe, probably not, no chance. First is the Land Ahoy set, which is a super fascinating build with a kind of blah or boring design. I'm going to start by putting this one in the eh, maybe. I think it's the build and possible design elements that may give this set a chance. The review board does seem to like unique concepts which the piano and the motorized lighthouse have. My gut says this one probably doesn't get approved, but I think there's a lot of potential here. Next is the Great Coral Reef, which, holy crap, that's a super busy set with so many small pieces and intricate details. I'll say this is a probably not. I think the build is a little too busy, and I don't think you glance at that and immediately know that is a coral reef. Next is Hyrule Castle, 30th anniversary, and if I'm being honest, I think this has no chance. 
Multiple Zelda sets have made it to the review stage and all have been rejected. Now, I'm not sure if this one is on the review board or on Nintendo. I almost think it might be Nintendo given how very protective of their IP and brands they are. Given that we do have Super Mario sets and even Luigi Mansion sets, I think it's possible we get some Zelda sets in the future. And if you're being optimistic, they may even try to have them coincide with Breath of the Wild 2. I just don't see them being part of the LEGO Ideas collection. The next is the Terrariums, which are actually a pretty cool little idea. However, I'm going to put this in the probably not category because again, LEGO is already doing plants and flowers in their creator expert theme. So this is something that kind of competes with their current themes, which is the reason I don't think any modulars have a chance and don't get picked historically. Next is Avatar The Last Airbender, The Avatar Returns. I loved this show and would love to see a set like this or similar made at some point, but realistically, I don't think this has a chance. I think it's a little too niche at the moment, but maybe if the Netflix series really pops, there might be a chance for future sets. Next is the Clockwork Solar System, and this is only the first set where I feel like it has a real possibility. We just talked about how the review board loves to use the ideas platform to bring truly exceptional builds to life, and this is one of those. There's a video I'll put in the description of this model actually working and orbiting, and they even talk about just how accurate those orbits are. I'm putting this in the feels possible category, but I really wanted to put it in the definitely getting made. This just feels like a Lego Ideas set. Next is the Dojo, which is a really nice set and build. I very much like the cherry blossom tree they incorporated into the set's design, but I feel like the design competes a lot with Ninjago. I mean, there's the Ninja Dojo Temple already. I'm gonna go with probably not. Next is Hocus Pocus, the Sanderson Sisters Cottage. My immediate reaction was, this isn't happening. And I still think it's probably not. However, the Home Alone house did surprisingly get approved, and this could give a more Halloween-oriented counter to the Home Alone house. Then there's the Naruto Ichiraku Ramen Shop 20th Anniversary. The build on this just looks amazing. I just think there's no chance. Maybe they finally do an anime set, and this is the one, but I'm not hopeful. I honestly think the Ghibli one we'll get to later has a significantly higher chance. Next is Motorized Johnny Five from the 80s movie Short Circuit, and I think there's no chance. Too niche, and I think the Clockwork Solar System stole the show as far as motorized sets. Next up is the James Webb Telescope, which is cool and was a fun moment for science when it launched in December. Lego does love to do space sets and is one of their classic brands. This is probably the best window for a possibility as it's still sort of in the public consciousness so I'll put it in the eh, maybe. Next is the Lego Emergency Box, and this is such a meme set, which honestly, why I don't think Lego would do it. I'll say probably not. Then is the Working Rubik's Cube, which is honestly just another super impressive build. There isn't really anything like it, so this feels possible, as again, it's playing into that unique build mechanics. Part of me wants to drop it into the eh, maybe category, but I'll leave it in the feels possible. Next, we have Brooklyn Nine-Nine, 99th Precinct, and we've honestly had a pretty big run on television series sets the last few years, with The Office being the most recent. This would be the most recently aired of the shows if it ended up getting approved. I'll put in the eh, maybe category, Honestly, I don't feel like it has the same clout as like Friends and The Office and Seinfeld and so on. But again, they've showed willingness to make those TV show sets. Next is Steampunk Explorers and is another pretty fun build. But I think the fact that it's steampunk themed is ultimately going to be its downside. And I'll say probably not, even though no chance seems just as likely which hurts my heart as I like this set and steampunk. I just don't see it happening. Then there's the Moomin House, which I had never heard of prior to this. 
Turns out it's a long-running Finnish comic strip with books and television series. Maybe this is more popular in Europe than here in the States, but I'll say it's going to be too niche and probably not. Next is Castle Outpost, and as much as I'd like to see some more medieval and castle-themed sets, I think this has no chance. They have the three-in-one creator castle out right now, so again, the competition from LEGO's own themes doesn't help. Next up is Downtown Records, which is a modular set and therefore I think has no chance. I'm sorry, I just don't see them competing with their own modular sets. Next is the Orchid, which once again, I think has even less of a chance than the Terrariums and for the same reason, so no chance for me. Then we have the Soyuz rocket, which follows along the same thought process as the James Webb Telescope. I do think the James Webb Telescope feels more likely of these two, so I'll say this one is probably not. Next is the Ghibli set, and I think this one has an outside shot. I think the Ghibli brand has a little more general appeal than most anime. I still don't think it's great, but eh, maybe. It maybe has a shot. Then we have probably the funniest set of the group, Baba Yaga, which I love that they built her full house, including the chicken legs the house is fabled to run around on, which is just the best and it's hilarious, and also means this has just no chance, but it's funny and I super appreciate it. After that is the meeting point, which is kind of a hybrid of a modular build and a train station set. It looks great and is a great idea, I just think it's competing in a space where LEGO is already making sets, so probably not. I really like both the next two sets, starting with the Pirate Tavern. It's a very vertical build and honestly reminds me of the medieval blacksmith and that it feels like it's a subtle homage to the LEGO Pirate series. I think I like this even more than the Pirates of Barracuda Bay LEGO idea set from a while back which in itself was a fun set. However, because of that set, I do think this is a probably not as much as I really do like this set. The other is the Riverside Scholar set, and really this has one of the more aesthetically pleasing appearances to me. I love how it has a waterfall built into the design with the towers and the bridges. Also, this creator, Han, was yellow first, is like six for six and having sets get 10,000 votes. I'll put this one as an eh, maybe. I feel like having the A-frame cabin get approved sort of hurts the possibility of these other unique buildings actually getting approved so close together. Like, Lego would be afraid they would cannibalize each other's sales. The next is the Union Pacific Big Boy, and Lego does like to make trains but train sets are pretty common in the LEGO Ideas, and I don't think any have actually gotten approved so far. So I just don't see it, so I'll say probably not. I'm very conflicted about this next one. Not whether I like it or not, because I definitely like it. It's just whether LEGO would actually make it, and that's the Magic Bookends. I unfortunately think probably not, because they already have the Harry Potter book sets, However, those are probably winding down, and it's unlikely these sets would be in production for one and a half to two years. So my heart wants this to be a maybe, but probably not is the right spot. Next is Asterix the Gaul, and this is another one I had never heard of prior to this. Turns out the Asterix the Gaul is a French comic strip series and books. But again, I think is probably going to be too niche, so probably not. Followed by Stargate, which I also think is too niche, and I think essentially has no chance. Then it's McDonald's franchise, 1955 to 1969, and I just can't see this one. I know there's that small Lego McDonald's set from years ago, and McDonald's is an international brand, but I just think probably not. After that is The Three Investigators, The Headquarters, and is based off another franchise I wasn't overly familiar with. And ultimately, like a lot of these other ones, I think that means it's probably going to be too niche and is a probably not. 
even though it does seem to have a pretty strong following in Germany. However, having this as a private eye slash detective set does make it a bit more appealing. Next is the NASA SR-71 Blackbird. And honestly, I can't see this plane without thinking about the 90s X-Men cartoon. So I went back and forth between probably not and eh, maybe. Ultimately, I decided to put it in the eh, maybe category, as LEGO does love their space sets and making ships. But this would be a way to pay homage to that in a slightly different way, which I do think they look for. The next is the Gremlins house, and I think there's just no chance. I think LEGO will dismiss this property early on as just being too dark and too scary for their brand. LEGO has historically stayed away from anything that's overly scary and violent. They don't even make Harry Potter sets from the Deathly Hallows novel and movies. So I would just be surprised if they approved this set. Then there's the Sheriff's Office, Wild West, which I like. The build the creator did here I'm a fan of with the Longhorn Skull and the Cactus, but is Lego going to do this? Mm, probably not. It does call back to their Wild West sets from the 90s, but it just feels outside of their pattern. The penultimate set is It's a Wonderful Lego Life, inspired by the Christmas movie It's a Wonderful Life, and I think that actually might be what gives this set a chance. It's a classic Christmas movie similar to Home Alone. I would even say more so. So if they did this set, it would probably be in two-ish years as the Home Alone set is retiring. So I could sort of see a timeline where they went from that set to this set. But it's hard for me to make this more than a eh, maybe at best. Then our final set is The Garden and Greenhouse. My initial impression was probably not. However, I think I've changed that to a eh, maybe, on the premise that LEGO might try to use this as an advocacy set for reusable and sustainable practices. So that sort of talked me into making this a eh, maybe, though to me it does still feel unlikely. But again, I still don't feel like I have a good idea what the LEGO Ideas Review Committee is actually going to do. However, I do need to make a prediction. So ultimately, in summer or so, when they make this announcement, I think they're going to pick two sets, the Clockwork Solar System and the Rubik's Cube. Which means, put your bets down now, they are definitely not going to choose those sets. Because I feel like I'm much better at predicting what their license sets are going to be as opposed to what the LEGO Ideas Review Committee is going to pick. They just seem so random. However, I am hoping to go three for three with my light year set predictions. And real quick, if I was the LEGO Ideas Review Board, which by the way, if I was, we'd have a ton of way cooler sets. But anyways, I'll make myself only pick three sets from this review just to stay with their typical limit. So, ultimately, I'd pick, honestly, picking just three sets is probably the hardest part of this entire video, and I'm not going to lie to you, I also just cheated and went and looked at the sets that are already going to be up for the next review, which did influence my decision making here. So my first pick is the Riverside Scholars. I just thought this build was incredible, and it's just so display worthy. So my second one is the Clockwork Solar System, and I think it's because it's just such an impressive build that when you have it on display and other people see it, that they're just not going to believe that that's actually a Lego set, and I think that just carries some weight. And then the third set for me would probably be the Pirate Tavern. I just love that build so much, and I think it would look great next to my Medieval Blacksmith. For honorable mentions, I'll say Naruto, because at some point an anime set needs to break through. In addition to that, the Steampunk Explorers, and really the only reason I didn't pick it as one of my three is because I actually think I like the Steampunk Airship that's already reached 10,000 votes and is part of the next wave a little bit more. And then the last honorable mention definitely has to be Baba Yaga because it's probably the most ridiculous set I've seen lately, other than maybe the goat boat for Thor Love and Thunder. And I already talked about how much I loved the ridiculousness of that set. But what do you guys think? 
I wanna know what your predictions are for the next Lego Ideas review and what sets you'd pick. You can try and be realistic and keep it as one to three or just have fun with it and pick as many as you want. But let me know down in the comments below. I can't wait to hear about it. But thanks again for watching my video. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you next time.